Good evening. More than 270 schools built in Scotland under private finance initiatives or PFI schemes are now at least partially owned by offshore investment funds. Parts of the projects can be traded in financial markets like the 17 Edinburgh schools that closed earlier this year for safety concerns. Well, the findings are part of a BBC investigation and our reporter Fiona Walker is here to tell us more. Fiona. Thank you, Jackie. Well, the inquiry into why the 17 schools in Edinburgh were found to be unsafe is underway. The pupils are back. But in investigating why the defects happened, and this is Oxgang's primary when the wall collapsed, the BBC also looked at the role of PFI, the private finance initiative which enabled the schools to be built. So who owns and runs the 17 schools? It's a private company called the Edinburgh Schools Partnership and it's been a shifting cast of characters behind the scenes. The original companies involved have sold their stakes. Part of their original stakes have been bought and sold 13 times. Shares have been traded on financial markets, all of which can raise a profit. Now the partnership is made up of four companies, investment funds, and they are based offshore. But the Edinburgh project isn't the only one of this kind. There are over 300 PFI schools all across Scotland. And new research shows that 270 schools, the vast majority, are at least partially owned offshore in investment funds. These funds are regarded as attractive investments. So, does any of this really matter? Well, this PFI analyst and critic says the profits extracted by investors are being put before children's education. The whole PFI machine really is, a, is really a profit machine, or wealth machine if you like, and that um, there are an awful lot of people making very substantial sums of money out of it, and which have got nothing to do with, and have no benefit to Edinburgh schools so critics argue excess profits and lack of accountability are not in the best interests of the children. But Edinburgh City Council, for one, doesn't necessarily agree. As long as we have a contractual relationship that kind of ties them down to the contract to do the right thing by the schools and make sure our pupils have still got schools and that they're safe and they're in good condition, um, then that's something that was decided 10, 15 years ago. Our job is to make sure we manage that contract going forward as well as it can be. The inquiry into the Edinburgh school's failures is due in December and is expected to have national, political and policy implications. Thank you very much, Fiona.